Hey everyone, welcome to Missouri Star Live. I am Misty Doan and I am so glad you're spending part of your Tuesday with us. Um, we have uh, Courtney actually behind camera helping with questions today. Hi Court, thanks for being here. Thanks for having and then of course our wonderful film crew making sure you guys get all of the great angles. So let's see where we have everyone tuning in from. Make sure you leave a shout out in the comments. So we have Susan from Nebraska, Terry a second are we back yeah. okay sorry we lost audio there for a second so i i had all these wonderful shout outs and you might have missed them sorry about that as usual we're live and te technical difficulties happen you know these things happen but if you you missed courtney is uh behind camera today helping with questions um liz is out so we're sending her all the love and and good vibes while she's taking a day um so thank you guys so much for being here. We've got something really fun to share with you. Um, so let's just dive right in. We are gonna talk about this really great panel quilt. This is the Ready Set Splash panel by Sandy Gervais for Riley Blake. It's so cute. And of course, it's got this great coordinating fabric line that goes with it. And the reason that I was drawn to this panel or these panels, I should say, is some of you may know that we have some new little twin boys in our uh, family. Jake's brother, Alan, and his wife had adorable little twins, Ollie and Ronnie. They're so cute. Um, and they're not identical, but just like these panels, they're still both adorable and, and cute. And so when I saw that there were two colorways of this cute little frog panel, I was like, it's meant to be. I have to make these for the boys. So. That is what inspired me. And I loved this simple um, free pattern from Riley Blake. And we have actually linked to this in the description. So you can click through and um, get this pattern for free to follow along. Um, and it will walk you through the whole thing. I really love how they did these borders. I think it dresses up any panel. And so I'm gonna walk you through how they did it. And remember, you can apply this idea to any panel that you have. And so, it's really useful. It's a great pattern, whether you need to make a cute little frog quilt or not. And so let's get started on that. So um, I want to show you here on this panel. I went ahead and I, uh, they call it fussy cut, but because of the way that this panel is made, it's not a whole lot of fussy cutting, but I did trim the panel down. And let me tell you the exact dimensions, 32 and a half wide, by 41 and a half tall. And so if you want this pattern to work for any pa uh, panel that you have in your stash, that's what size you're gonna trim your panel to. So that's what we're starting with. And I've cut that down and then I went ahead and attached the first inner border, which you can see here is just this one and a half um, inch border. And I, I put it on the sides first and then the top and the bottom. Oh, you know what? I dove right in without telling you all the fabric requirements. I'm notorious for this. So let me just back up before I get too far into this. And if you're just joining, we're talking about this great pattern um, from Riley Blake. This is a, a line from Sandy Gervais called Ready, Set, Splash. It's really cute. But the reason I wanted to share it is because it's a great way to dress up any panel. Um, so the fabric requirements are, you need one of your panels. And remember this one comes in both this coral and then this little guy has a, a navy swimmer. Um, so it comes in two colorways and then you need one pack of five inch squares. You actually only need 14 of those squares. So you don't even need a, a full one. So this could be a great um, way to use up stash if you've got it. And then you're going to need two thirds of a yard of your, uh, this like blue right here, two thirds of a yard to make that sashing. And then you're also going to need a half yard of these little frogs for your outer border, and then another half yard for your binding. And we used the same uh, binding as we did this border here, so you can see that. Okay, so back to it. I cut the panel <laughs> to 31 and a half, 32 and a half by 41 and a half. So remember that, and then we've attached our one and a half inch um, border around that whole thing. So this is ready to go. And now we're going to get to these cute little squares that we have here. So what you're going to want to do is select 14 five inch squares from your pack. 
just pick a variety that you like. Let me just grab some here. These prints are so cute and happy. Let me find these cute little waves and frogs. these green bubbles I want to make sure I grab these so cute and I just made a few stacks of my five inch squares and then we're going to sub cut all of these let me line them up we're going to sub cut all of these into two and a half by two and a half inch squares so we're just going to cut our five inch squares in half both directions so, oops my blade is a little dull, I can tell. Mm, boys, were we cutting something we shouldn't have been with this rotary cutter? Maybe. It is very dull. All right, <laughs> let's try this. Okay, we'll swap it out. Let's grab the other one. Can't trust them, I tell you. <laughs> when you have boys when you in have, the sewing room. When you have guys around your sewing tools. <laughs> All right, let's try this one. Oh, so much better. Okay. That was way better. And so you're just gonna do that to all 14 of your five inch squares. Let's go ahead and cut up a few more just so we have some variety here. I'm just gonna cut through these as well. Cutting these down to two and a half by two and a half. And so I believe that means we're gonna have 54 of these little guys. And so now, this is where I did something a little different than what the pattern says. The pattern has you cut um, out of this fabric. It has you cut a two and a half inch strip and to sub cut that into two and a half by one and a half inch rectangles that you sew in between each of these. Now that seemed like a lot of work to me <laughs> to cut all of that down. And so what I did is I just cut one and a half inch strips instead. And the reason that I did that is because I can now take my one and a half inch strip and my two and a half inch squares and I can sit at my machine and I can just chain piece these squares onto this one and a half inch strip. And then when I cut them apart, I'm gonna have those two and a half by one and a half inch rectangles without cutting and sewing each one individually. And so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna line this up all right and we're just sewing with a quarter inch seam and right as i get to the end of that square i'm just going to pick up another one and i'm going to line it up right behind it and you can just keep feeding these in just like so and this makes it go so much faster. This is such a genius idea. Oh. And we made, we used the pattern as written and did some samples. And when Misty came in today and told me she did that, I just, it was just mind altering. It, it <laughs> saves so much time. Sometimes I, I told Courtney this, I, you know, sometimes I read through patterns and it's just like I get nothing out of it and I have to follow it exactly. But when I read it this time, I was like, oh, it would be so much easier if we just did that. So, you know, I'm grateful that I had <laughs> a little stroke of genius um, to show you this way. And so we'll just sew one more just because it's quick and easy. And you would do this actually um, with 52 of your 54 squares and you just need two of them that aren't attached to a strip. I'll show you in a second when we assemble the borders, but you're gonna just use 52 of those two and a half inch squares and you'll just attach them to your strips just like this. And then now we can just lay them on our mat here and we can just line up and just work our way down and just trim these off so they're perfect. And if you get them close enough, you don't even have to trim off this little sliver in between some of them I got close enough, some of them I didn't. Like that one's good to go. Whoops, there we go. This one's probably close enough. And it just makes it so much faster to be able to go through all of those together. And so then now 
we can just take this over to the iron, take our little stack, and we can roll them back, just like so. And we just press them back, and press them back, and keep going like that. So much faster than cutting all of those little rectangles. Misty, do you have to keep those squares that close together? Or can you spread them out a little bit more? Is there enough fabric to spread them out? Um, you can spread them out a little bit. Um, when, I, when I figured it, so let me see here. For, to do the whole thing, including this, this first inner border, all of these little sashings, and this outer border, you're going to need, four plus four is eight plus five is 13 um, one and a half inch strips. And you can spread them out a little bit because I, I gave you four to do, four strips to do these sashings. And so that should give you plenty of room. But like I said, I like mine close together so I have less waste to deal with in between. And if you keep them close together, it makes cutting them apart and square, keeping them square much simpler. Okay, so then now let's talk about how we're going to assemble these inside borders. We're gonna do these sides first. And so that, this is our top, so square to square is the top of the, this little border here. So our sides start with a, a little rectangle and end with a little rectangle. So I'm actually going to need to cut two one and a half by two and a half rectangles, which is much better than 54. So we're gonna cut a couple of those so that those are ready to go. There we go. And so now, when I go to sew these together, um, my side borders, you're going to need 14, like this, that are attached together. And then we're gonna take one of these to add to the end so that you start and end with your rectangle. Does that make sense? And I actually have one sewn here. So you can see I've started with my rectangle square all the way down, sewed 14 together, and then I added my extra rectangle that I cut to the bottom so that it starts and ends with that. And then we're just gonna sew those to the side. So let's do that because we can talk about good border practice because we get a lot of questions about how to avoid wavy borders and things like that. So first of all, if you're really worried about it, Make sure you take the time to pin. It's always a good idea. Um, you know me, I'm not much of a pinner, <laughs> but I do take my time when I'm working on borders and it's a good time to remind yourself to be patient. Um, the speed of your machine is really your friend. You don't wanna push or pull. Um, and if it feels like it's going too fast to you and you are overwhelmed or, or um, just working too hard really, that's kind of when those errors and those waves are gonna come into play. If you let the feed dogs and the machine itself do the work, um, you're gonna end up great. And so I always put the bulk of my quilt, the main body of my quilt on the bottom. And I put my border in the top. And you've heard Jenny say, if you ever have extra fabric, the feed dogs are gonna take in that extra fabric. Well, the reason that you don't want the border on the bottom is because it's lighter than the quilt itself, there's a likelihood that the feed dogs are gonna take in more fabric and then you're gonna get those waves. That's what we don't want to happen. So we're gonna set this on top and we are going to just line this up and sew with our usual quarter inch. And like I said, I am not pushing. My hand is right here guiding the fabric, making sure that everything is staying lined up and even when I am laying this on, on here, excuse me, um, I am not pulling on it. I'm not putting any pressure on these uh, piece squares that we've put together. So we're just gonna zoom down here. And you can keep adjusting your quilt to make sure you don't have anything pulling on it. Because remember, that's what we wanna avoid. And I just keep taking my time and adjusting. If you're just joining us, Misty is sewing this really cute frog panel. 
from Riley Blake by Sandy Gervais, and it's called Ready, Set, Splash. Yes, and it's got a free pattern, too. I know we love a free pattern, and so we've linked to that. Thanks, Courtney, for chiming in. And we're just talking about good border practice right now. So we are sewing on this cute little piece square border, making sure we don't pull, and we let the machine do the work. All right. And we are getting closer to the end there. And I, I don't know if you guys can see, but even though I've followed the measurements exactly, mine is looking just a hair off. So I am going to line up my ends because remember, we can let those feed dogs take in the extra fabric. So I'm going to hold my ends together and we're just going to let the machine do the work. And now I can see that it's starting to line up just by being aware of that. And then it ended up just perfect. And there we go. You can see how great that went on. So let's go ahead and press that. Do we have any questions so far, Court, about anything we've, we've covered? Which way is there a certain way you should press that border towards the border or towards the panel? You know, I actually think it says in here, but I, I always pre tend to press my borders out so as, I. as I go. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm just Great. pressing it out towards the border that I've added. Okay, so if you didn't hear that, I don't know what's going on with my mic. There it goes back. It's back. We got a cord issue. Oh, geez. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, so Courtney just asked a question about which way we're pressing our borders, and we both press ours out, so out towards the border that we've added. So that's what I've done here. And how would we quilt? How would you quilt it? I know we used a little frog. We had a frog pattern in our quilting department. Yes, it's so, so cute. Oh, you know what? I missed a little spot here. I must have not had it lined up, so we're going to fix that real quick. I think some straight line quilting would be really cute following or make them wavy yes. following the lines on the Yes, panel. that would, would be, be very cute. really cute. And honestly, because of the, the bubbles and, and splashes in here, even just some swirls or waves would be really, really sweet and cute on this pattern. So let me just fix this, guys. We all have little little boo-boos that happen from time to time so I'm just gonna make sure that is actually caught in the seam and check that there we go that looks great now I can finish pressing roll that back and then we're gonna do the same thing to the other side and I'm just gonna zoom through this one a little bit quicker um, and if we have any questions, Court, just feel free to shout them out at me, and then I'll show you how we do the top and bottom borders. Okay. Again, making sure we're lined up when we start. And just taking our time. This wants to fall off the table, but I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to keep that there. Zoom down, recheck, make sure I'm staying lined up. Ta-da! Approaching the ends, making sure my ends line up where I want them. Again. Very good. All right, let me make sure. I don't know what is happening, but I just had another spot slip. So I'm actually going to... Find probably my, because I'm in today. Probably. Something's throwing off my mojo, Court. We don't have Liz's mojo. Uh, <laughs> that's all right. We're going to fix <clears> this. <throat> oh, that isn't. Oh, it is a seam ripper. It's got a little brush on the end. All right. Let me just fix this. 
It's good for you guys to know that everyone makes mistakes and these things happen and the seam ripper can be our friend. So we're just going to slide through that seam right there. There we go. That's the part where it... And actually this is a good little tip. Let me show you this. So down here I can see that my quarter inch is good and up here I can see that my quarter inch is good and so I'm just picking out the part that's not lined up that where my, my seam slid a little bit. And so I'm gonna pick this side back to where my quarter inch is good. And now, instead of having to pick all the way to the end, I can just line that little section up and, and just go ahead and fix that part. So that's what I'm gonna do. And when you do that though, you usually want to make sure that you backstitch when you're starting those new seams so we don't have them come out again. So I've done that. And then now I'm just gonna triple check and make sure I'm lined up. And I can zoom down. We're all square, there we go. Back down to that other end where it was good and backstitch. There we go, fixed it. All right, now we can press that back. And then we can talk about adding the top and bottom border. So this is done almost identical to your side borders, except for instead of starting with this little rectangle, we're gonna start with the two and a half inch squares and end with the two and a half inch squares. And so that's really easy. All you do, you know, when you started the side borders, you, you know, sewed them together like this. And literally all you do is flip them around for your top and bottom. And so we're just starting with that square and we're going to put um, 13, actually, sorry, 12 that are attached like this. And then remember, we've got some extras. We left two extras out. And so we're going to, um, so one of our, our plain two and a half inch squares to the end of that. So we've got um, 13 squares total with 12 of the little rectangles in between. And so then I've got those ready to go. And they look like this. And that is our top and bottom. And so let's just go ahead and sew one of them on here, just because this is the magic of it. And I want to make sure you guys see. And now when you're attaching this, Isaac, can you see right here? Okay. All right. When you're attaching this little square border, you do want to make sure you're matching this little seam here because that will make it all lay nicely and neatly. Um, it'll, it's a little forgiving since this fabric here is all the same, but it will just look so clean and pretty if those, those seams right there line up. And the beauty of this border is that's really the only spot you have to watch is the beginning and the end because the rest of these, you're just matching up to that other border and there's no seams to line up. But I am going to watch that. So that's one of those places where we talk about nesting your seams, where your seams go in different directions. So I'm going to do that here. Make sure that seam is nested where I want it. This one, there we go. And then we're gonna stitch that down just like before. And now that I've got to that point and those are going where I want them, I can just zoom on down. Making sure I'm lined up. Here we go. Perfect. to keep the bulk out of your lap so you're not pulling against the machine there and then as I get to the end remember we're just going to watch again and make sure that our seams are nesting how we want them to and I am going to just reline this up here now that I have the surface to work on there we go Voila. 
right to the end there. And look how great that turns out. We'll just press that back and it looks so cute. It gives you this great little detail around your border, dresses it up and makes this simple panel quilt a little more ooh-ah. Once you're done with those squares, this is just another one and a half inch border that you, you know, you're gonna attach again, your sides and then your top and bottom. And then we finish it off with this little border here, which let me just double check. I'm pretty sure it's two and a half inches. It is two and a half inches on this outer border. And then like Courtney said earlier, we quilted it with our long arms here at Missouri Star in our quilting department with this cute frog pattern that works just great. Um, and then just bound it with a, uh, I actually use on smaller projects, a two and a quarter inch binding. And so that's what we've done here. And it looks really, really great. So hopefully this um, gave you some inspiration. Um, thank you to Riley Blake and Shan Sandy Gervais for this really great free pattern that they allowed us to share with you. It's so much fun. Be sure to check it out. And if you don't have any other questions, do we have anything coming through, Court, that you think we need to cover? No, like um, how to make the quilt bigger, you can add, oh, just make a larger border. Absolutely. That, that's a, actually a really good question. You'd have to do a little bit of figuring math-wise, but even just making each of these borders, like here and here and here, bigger, um, it will make your quilt get bitter, bigger quickly. Borders do that. It's a little bit magical. So um, that's a great question. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope this inspired you and, and gave you a new look at a way to tackle your panel projects. So have a great week and we will see you next time.